Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'd like to begin uh, by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the Garner lands on which we're gathered here this morning, and I acknowledge their deep and diverse systems of knowledge and pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. So my presentation will detail the optical image system artwork Mirror Mirror that I'm currently developing and for which I've been working with ants to fabricate the specialized material components. This artwork explores the materiality of image making and how optical image technologies mediate our experience of time in the form of the moving image. I will share with you some of the ideas, processes and continuing works in progress of Mirror Mirror. This project was initially developed during a Synapse artist residency uh, funded by the Australian Network for Art and Technology and hosted by the Research School of Physics at AMU, where I worked with a collaboration with physicist Dr. Jeff Campbell. And now I'm continuing to work on this project with ANF at the University of South Australia. In particular, I've been working with microengineer Mark Sherrill, from whom you'll hear shortly, and also Dr. Dale Otten, a research fellow at the Laser uh, Physics and Photonics Devices Lab at UniSA, has also been advising on the project. So Mirror Mirror is an entanglement of art, optics, microfabrication, mathematics, historical mechanisms and concepts of time folded into moments of our 21st century dailiness. It serves to create what the Swedish art curator and critic Daniel Birnbaum calls a spasm of time. And inspired by my background as an artist working with glass, I wanted to explore how the materiality of optics and the moving image has potential to create new ways of perceiving time. In a similar material way to how the lens of a telescope or an extruded fiber optic cable can optically compress space and time, my optical image system device endeavors to create a different and explicit apparatus of time for the viewer, one that is not an expression of minutes and hours, but an experience of attending to materiality, movement and light. So this transdisciplinary project allowed me to explore novel ways of using optics to develop a projected image system. And my aim for the system when it's finally finished is to bring renewed awareness to our, how our perception is constantly mediated and how that relates to the construction of time. As G.W. Seabold writes in his novel, Austerwich, time is by far the most artificial of all our conventions. And time for me is interesting phenomenon in that it's simultaneously human and non-human. So being both an object and a subjective experience, it's deeply connected to our human and post-human relationship with technology. Time machines have a long, diverse and intricate past from astrolobes and astronomical mechanisms to atomic clocks and dispersed networks con controlled by underground pneumatics. Time has come to dominate the structure and rhythm of our inner and outer lives perceptually, socially, culturally, biologically, and of course, technologically. It seems then that time has become faster and faster as it shrinks our days that pass by in the blink of an eye. And in this way, time is interlinked with our cognitive and perceptual systems. We're inseparable from the mechanism of time. Optical moving image devices within the world of media archeology span have an intricate connection with time. Media archaeology is a field exploring the history of media devices and their cultural and social contexts in order to understand the continual emergence of new media. And in my particular area of research, I'm interested in optical moving image media. So the emergence of the cinematic image from that of pre-cinema was um, in part facilitated by an astronomical device known as Jensen's apparatus, used to measure the time it took for Venus to pass between the Earth and the Sun in 1874. And the optical components of this apparatus were repurposed 20 years later into early film cameras and projectors. The optical mechanics of Jensen's apparatus, which actually failed in its astronomical endeavor, went on to have profound repercussions for the moving image and the technological emergence of cinema. And in a similar way, my project Mirror Mirror draws from a preceding optical moving image apparatus, questioning what happens when various mechanisms and understandings of time and the moving image are brought together in the form of an artwork. So could hybrid historical and contemporary collages allow us to experience and understand time differently? Could they generate a new spasm of time? That notion I alluded to earlier by generating awareness that time is both mediated and constructed mechanically, digitally, and cognitively. 
The artist and engineer who resisted the mechanistic norm of his time and who was significant influence on the development of Miramar is the 19th century Frenchman Charles Emile Renault. At the end of the 19th century, Geneva and Vita drive mechanisms were being trialed in revolutionary designs for film projectors, but instead of adhering to these purely mechanical designs, Renault developed a moving image system using optical mechanics, one that depends on reflected and refracted light and rotating mirrors rather than cog and drive wheels. He combined optical mechanics with human perception to create his praxinoscope device and later the more elaborate theatrotique. And the central feature of these devices is a multifaceted mirror polygon and series of image frames. And previously I had designed and developed Ghost in the Machine, an, an artwork based on Renault's optical mechanics, where each frame, image frame presents a different stage of my ghost movement. And the process of working out the optics and fabrication of the methods for this work led to the development of Mirror Mirror, a bit the moving images and work being showed. We did. Oh, it did, great, okay. So Ghost of the Machine had used uh, plain mirrors, but now I wanted to explore how changing the surface of a mirror could affect the moving image. So that rather than having an image frame for each mirror facet of the polygon, I wondered if I could create a moving image of time transmitted in the form of a single and static uh, translucent image source, and in doing so, make explicit the construction of time. Could a series of rotating cotton polished mirrors optically repattern the original image, generating light instances of that image to form a projected animation. And this was supposed to be the starting point of the project, but it turned out that this initial endeavor was far more complicated than I anticipated. So I started off on a journey of developing a novel moving image system, which in addition to optical mechanics, merges computational image patterns, microfabrication and electronics with our human perceptual system. So my initial collaborator, Jeff Campbell at ANU, as well as being a physicist, is a nanofabricator and Python coder. And so to begin to test my idea, we created a small number of mirrors to optically cut and polish, uh, polish pattern surfaces. And our main fabrication tool was the ultra, an ultra precision lathe. So when we tested these patterns in my optical system, we saw that the faceted mirror was actually affecting the direction of light emitted from the translucent image source. So we decided that the idea was worth pursuing. So Jeff trained me in how to use the lathe, and while I was learning the ins and outs of the machine, finding it very challenging to have to reframe my visual thinking to a kind of Cartesian axis of X, Y, and Z, we fabricated some simple patterns using large radar curvatures to observe the effect in the reflected image. And here you can see the visual relocation of certain areas of the reflected image is caused by the curvature of the mirror, where a highlighter pen just placed at 90 degrees to the mirror um, becomes curved in its image. Then we developed and controlled um, more, uh, more patterns to test. So to provide Jeff with a visual reference, I just created initial image patterns in Photoshop and then simulated the movement of these images using animation software. Jeff then scripted the initial pattern in Python, which I subsequently edited to develop a series of these patterns using the application Jupyter. And then these files were saved in a numeric control format, which was compatible with the lathe's G-code software. And so this was the code that then uh, the machine used to cut and polish the mirrors. Initially, we fabricated different horizontal patterns using various depths of cut across the surface of the facets. And here you can see how this pattern affects the optics of the image. So to the eye, these patterned mirrors look actually quite similar. However, optically, they function differently, producing a range of visual effects in the projected image. And then we developed more intricate pixelated patterns. But when we tested these in the optical system, each angle, the angle of each pixel step was scattering too much light. So we increased the scale of the pixels to make the pattern more readable. And then we coded just to select array of pixels on the mirror. So instead of pixelating the entire surface so that the eye then could distinguish the now foregrounded pixel from the background of the image. But I was still encountering uh, several issues. For example, the image was skewed and half out of focus because of the position of the mirror relative to the image source. So to simplify some of these image issues and because we had had more success with the horizontal uh, pattern, I decided to develop this pattern and test it if it would generate a moving image when rotated in my optical system. So the process of creating these patterns became a really interesting part of the project for me. 
Wanting the patterns to be human-made as opposed to algorithm-generated, I developed the patterns by visually establishing sequences in the code. And I don't write or compose music, but I thought about how this must be like composing a score using musical notation. And I then tra translated my human constructed patterns into G code using Jupyter so that the nano lathe could then fabricate these mirrors. I modeled up and printed a series of jigs just to hold the mirror facets. And then these were connected to a high torque geared motor, which uh, could accommodate rotating a, a relatively heavy polygon at slow speeds. And initially I tested a six, then a 12, and then a 24 faceted mirror. But while testing these different polygons, I observed that the angle of rotation from facet to facet was significant to the perception of the moving image. And the 12 and six sided polygons had to be rotated too quickly, causing the image to blur. And even the 24 sided polygon was still not successfully producing a continuous image as my previous work goes to the machine had done using its 48 uh, facets. And after a lengthy pause in the project, I recommenced Mirror Mirror with Mark Sherrill at the um, Australian National Fabrication Facility and Dale Auten from Photonic, the Photonics Lab at the University of South Australia. And instead of a nano lathe, we're using a single um, crystal diamond tool in the Kira Microloan. So Mark uh, will shortly provide much more detail about this process. I now also have access to um, an optics bench in Dale's Photonics Lab, which was generously offered to me by Dale and Professor David Lancaster. And this has really given me uh, much greater control in testing the fabrication of the mirror uh, patterns and contributed to solving some of the optical conundrums I had encountered during the in initial part of the project. For example, now I can position the mirrors much more precisely relative to the other optical components and observe how even the slightest alteration in my system affects the optics of the projected image. And because I was now working with a mill instead of a lathe, I had the opportunity to rethink the patterns I was creating. For example, I added a foreground and background to the projected image by placing a border around the central pattern. In the mirror parts, this board is sat at 0.5 of a mil lower than the central pattern, and which remained the same for each mirror. So only the central pattern changed across the individual mirror components. And by specifically placing the mirror within my optical system, I could achieve an illusionary depth of field in the projected image, where the foreground is almost in focus while the background remains out of focus. And this also serves to heighten the illusion of movement in the pattern. In other words, as the background remains the same from image to image and consequently appears stationary to the viewer, the foreground pattern changes with each image. So with uh, Mark, um, Working with Mark on the uh, Kira Micromill, I explored uh, various height differentiations in the mirror patterns to see if I could produce this optimal depth of field in the image. And then Mark used my 3D models and patterns that I had coded very simply in Excel uh, so he could program the Kira. However, significantly to obtain the required optical finish on the mirrors, we needed a single crystal diamond tool for the Kira. While we were waiting for the tool to arrive, because um, COVID had caused shipping delays, we explored other ways of fabricating the components. Mark fabricated a component using a rougher tool, and then we sputter coated it using chromium. We also silver coated silver wafer and then spliced it to clad a 3D printed part of the same pattern configuration. However, both of these methods were unsuccessful due to the loss of light because of the imprecision of the cladding. Um, but then finally, the monocrystal diamond tool arrived and we fabricated single elements to test so that I could work out the optimal heights for the pattern. And once this was worked out, I developed the pattern for the overall image uh, sequence, which was then applied to generate uh, the program for the Kira. So with this single crystal tool, Mark was able to cut and polish the 3D mirror patterns to a surface roughness of, se of seven nanometers. And this level of finish was significant for the quality of the projected image, as now there was much less loss of light compared with the chromium finish. So working with Mark to create the optical components and, and Dale advising on how the image light is interacting with components has also led to my understanding that for mirror mirror to work perceptually as well as optically, the projected image from the image source and mirror both need to be out of focus. And previously I had thought that the light from the image source reflecting off the mirror and onto the lens was in effect a single bundle of light. Um, and for all the physicists in the room, I'm describing this as an artist and not a scientist. 
Um, so for mirror mirror, uh, the projected image seems to be using two different sets of light information with different focal planes. So one from the mirror and then a separate one from the image source. And understanding this has provided me with lots of potential ways in which to alter uh, my projected images. So finally, deciding on an optimal range uh, of depths to cut the mirrors, once again, I created the pattern by visually sequencing numeric values within specific code parameters. Again, I simulated how the pattern would be perceived as a moving image using animation software. But as I would soon find out, the digital sim sim simulation wasn't at all representative of how the human perceptual system observes a materially generating generated moving image. And so for now, I've had to retrace my steps and kind of go back to the drawing board using laser cut mirrors to just get the moving image to work more successfully. So clearly, Mirror Mirror has some journeying yet to do, but so far this project has allowed me to think about and observe firsthand the difference between material and digital time. And amongst other things, it has made me aware of my digital conditioning or digital blind spot regarding how I experience the moving image and time. And to return back to my initial question of whether Mirror Mirror can allow us to experience or understand time differently, I don't know that yet. That, that's a question, I guess, for the future when I finally get to install the resolved artwork. So the mix of ideas explored in Mirror Mirror subtly allude to the nature of time being this entanglement of scientific, engineered, industrial, economic, cultural, and social influences. But it also shows how time might be considered more simply as a technological and cognitive interface between our human and non-human worlds. And the development of my artwork interface of Mirror Mirror has led me to reflect on what it is to be a human artist engaging with computerized machines. And if everything is CNC generated or fabricated, then what's my human relationship with the artwork and how do I keep open my human relationship with time? And just finally, Mirror mirrors rotating optical components, creating the illusion of movement in the projected moving image light, which combine digital material and physical processes have potential to establish renewed awareness of the inseparable connection of our human perceptual system to the optical technologies of time. And this awareness can make explicit that time is constructed and mediated and is therefore also unfixed which then lends itself to being available for new modes of interpretation and experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's we'll see if the audience have any questions for Adrian. We've got one there. Um, what animation software were you using to sort of... In the simulation, animate? just animate, Adobe Animate. Right. So just a frame by frame. So creating the the first images from photo, in Photoshop and then bringing them in as a frame by frame with Animate. Does that have any, like, actually ray tracing capabilities in it? Not, no, not. So they're very much applications that artists use. So, yeah, I wasn't using anything like... Z Max, or but maybe that that's a really good question because maybe that could help me bridge the gap between the actual digital simulation and what's going on with the human perception. Yeah. You gone into the like biology or psychology of how we perceive horizontal and vertical slightly differently? No, happening? so that's I think that's the next. That's what I need to understand next to actually get the system working yeah. so yeah i mean i'm very open to lots of information about that that's happening <laughs>